Something else to consider too is, and it's related to the community aspect again of YouTube and then finding these support groups, is definitely if you know somebody who is an influencer who already has some sort of, you know, huge following that he or she wouldn't mind promoting you, let's say if they are already, you know, uh, a popular YouTuber and you could piggyback off of off of them uh, a case in point would be Shane Dawson for instance right uh, he has his partner and fiance Rylan Adams and uh, his sister Morgan I mean of course Shane has millions of followers and they regularly you know promote each other on their channels and so each of them now regularly brings in a million or so you know minimum views per vlog post that they put up and upload so if you have that access to somebody who already has a big following and they're willing to do that for you hey have them give you a shout out uh as far as i go again i already had my own pretty large social media following with my business so that's how i appealed already to an existing group of people to pull in I'm a little bit ashamed to ask some of my other uh, big, uh, you know, social media friends uh, to promote me. I, I'm just, you know, a little shy about it. And I kind of wanted to like, you know, try to do it all on my own, but it definitely helps to, with your exposure to get people to help, you know, put your content out there, to put your channel out there, to put your personality out there, find somebody who can help promote you in that way. Again, and also related to this whole networking aspect of a uh, community with YouTube and uh, on social media, uh, person to person, you know, you got to get yourself in the habit of promoting your channel in person, any chance you get, promote it with your friends when you're out physically out there, you know, at a social setting out, you know, going out with your friends. Uh, I regularly, you know, of course, engage with my clients too. And, you know, of course, mid-conversation, you kind of want to tie it in there and you want to be like, hey, um, I have a YouTube channel and I'm going to feature your event if, if that's okay. And that's how I also bring exposure to my channel is that I also tie in my clientele with that. And uh, so like, let's say I have a wedding coming up and I have a bride and groom. I ask them right away if it's okay to cover their wedding uh, for my vlog. And of course, uh, I've never had a rejection. Like most most couples are, have been so gracious to be open to sharing their special moments. Because who doesn't like to watch, you know, a wedding story, right? And I have, I am so blessed in that my job in life at this point in my life is to, you know, make wedding dreams come true. Uh, in terms of decor and lighting and that's my job, you know, so uh, I'm so lucky that most of my couples don't mind me featuring them on my channel and then likewise too uh, What worked for me was that when I would have these weddings uh, that would happen uh, Of course you share the video with your clients who are your brides and grooms They share it with their families because of course it was such a momentous event for, for you know, their families and that's how I managed to get tons of views with uh, my particular videos is because I was able to network you know and and talk about my channel you know person to person and you know expose my channel in that way and yeah and then who knows she might find you know permanent subscribers and followers I have a lot of my my brides and grooms who definitely do watch me on uh, you know, YouTube long after I've worked on their events. And also my corporate clients love to check in and, and see you know, how I covered their events as well. So don't be afraid to publicly, you know, just get in the habit of always plugging in your channel you know, out in, in your social life um, with your family, even if it's just your family. You know, constantly remind them you know, to check into your channel and especially if you have something new, right? Like when you have something new to post, that gives you an incentive, of course, to, to have a reason to promote your channels because something new is up. So that's how you start, especially 
you know, when you're really, when I was beginning, I had only that to rely on. And I'm, I'm proud to report now that, you know, I have a following of people. I mean, it's still, it's still a small account, but it, I'm very proud that I do have, you know, watchers uh, in Europe, in Thailand. I have them in Vietnam as well, and the Philippines, and of course, Guam, and, and of course, the mainland United States as well. One of the things that I personally like to do was also do some research into successful vloggers, right? Like people who have had tons of views. And I really, you know, I, I thought, you know, these people who have had a, a gazillion subscribers, millions of views, I initially thought that um, it would have to be like some high production, um, you know, vlogger that has already had like, already has like a film crew to, to film their stuff and do these fancy edits. But you know, the YouTube algorithm is, is really like, I guess, democratic in that it sometimes, you know, promotes people who don't even have the fanciest like editing style. Like it's really about content that, that they, that YouTube will, f or the algorithm or whoever, whatever magical being behind the scenes, uh, whoever decides what to push out there uh, on trend, um, it's really about, again, the subject matter. And that being said, you know, when you do, if you do want to kind of hit mainstream and be exposed to the wider community, um, I found it useful to sometimes, you know, look at what's on trend. And when I say what's on trend, you know, you would look what's trending on YouTube, right? The number one videos. So I'll give you an example. One of the ones who regularly appears on number one on trending are the beauty vloggers, uh, the makeup vloggers, the makeup gurus, namely like Jeffree Star. I was exposed to Jeffree Star. I didn't know who Jeffree Star was until I started vlogging. And I, of course, then I ended up being a fan because the guy is self-made literally started out as uh, you know myspace um you know personal persona kind of migrated from myspace because of course myspace faded out and he was at first a, a musician a, you know a pop artist and then that fizzled out as well and literally with like 500 dollars to jeffree star's name he decides to <clears throat> you know go on a dream put that money into his dream business, which is uh, makeup. And I guess it was like his first, you know, makeup item palette. He channeled all his energy into that and it boomed. And, you know, I think it's been five years for Jeffree Star, five or six years. And he's living in a $14 million mansion now. And, you know, the makeup just generates so much, millions and millions, you know, and he's such an inspiration, you know, because I'm a small business owner myself here in Guam. And so, of course, if you realize that you, I, I had to think, okay, how am I going to tie in makeup to my vlogs? Because that always, you know, trends. That's a big trender, trending topic on YouTube. You got to get creative. And um, yeah, it is kind of piggybacking on the success a little bit of these big YouTubers. But I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the things... I, I will say though, is that I'm really into the products. Like I really, I'm mean, not into makeup, but like, you know, Jeffree Star sells accessories, clothing. And then he did this tie-in with Shane Dawson and they did a clothing thing, you know, collaboration along with a makeup palette. So what I did was of course, when their videos would be on trend, number one on trending, then I would try to find something that I could relate video wise, vlog wise on my channel that could kind of piggyback off of that. So what I would do is I would order the items from Jeffree Star, uh, some of the accessories, some of the clothing, uh, even from Shane Dawson too. Then I do a review on the products because I actually really like, you know, the clothing products. And then his, you know, his star mirrors, there was a pig logo that I really liked from Shane Dawson. So it wasn't really, you know, just trying to piggyback off, off of somebody's success but it was really also being smart about what's on trend so that it could potentially generate traffic to your site if you're linking up with something that's on trend, especially when you put in keywords into your edit, you know, uh, like you know, Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, 
and maybe the specific name of the product because there's going to be tons of people, there are millions and millions of fans of Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star that are going to be looking for their products, especially because they, they tend to sell out quick. So the next best thing is to, to always um, check in on videos reviewing the products, right? That's what people would want to do next. But back to the editing again. Uh, of course, because they're, you know, they're one of the uh, more popular uh, on-trend YouTubers. Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson have people to film for them and edit for them. I, I know Shane edits his own videos as well and, and puts all that work in himself. Uh, but yeah, um, there are a lot of successful YouTubers who have really plain Jane um, filming like exactly like how I'm doing it right now. And that was really uh, an eye opener for, for me because then I felt less pressure to, you know, like, you know, to put out such flashy stuff. I'm just doing things to the best of my ability and within my personal skill set and hoping that the content will shine through on its own without any kind of bells and whistles. Uh, that's really what I'm going for when I post my content. And I was really um, woken up to that when I saw, um, yeah, like other successful YouTubers who don't really have flashy editing skills. They don't have drones flying around doing these nice cinematic, you know, views. A lot of the times it's just them sitting here and just being really genuine and just really communicating something of value that an audience uh, member wants to take with them. And it doesn't need bells and whistles. It doesn't need fancy text or anything. It's just communicating that with a genuine uh, mindset. I think that resonates with the YouTube viewer. And so I tried to do that myself by just really engaging, being engaging with the audience and just really being genuine about what I'm presenting, uh, whether it be one of my events or some of my food reviews and just like having a good time uh, vlogging with special guests. I also wanted to address the issue about how much content uh, should be posted and how frequently. A lot of people believe that, um, you know, they go through the method of, of just uploading tons and tons of videos and hoping that collectively those would generate a lot of watch hours. Um, I legitimately have seen that work for people. So I just want to make you aware. But at the same time, I do truly believe in posting value content, like really something as long you can post a hundred videos or in one week, but you got to make sure that you're not posting crap. Like you really have to post something of potential value to your audience that they could take away again. And like, you know, like I definitely want to watch something and, and hope that I learned from it, got a new skill set out of it. So be aware, like, yes, even if you want to put a lot of content out in, in mass and bulk, um, you still have to put out good content. Like I said, I only have about 56 um, videos. When the holidays just passed, I, I love Christmas. That's another big thing for me. So I went to town, especially if you're aware of what Vlogmas is, is where people uh, choose to post as many as uh, one video a day until, you know, from December 1 to December 25. Uh, it's like, you know, Christmas sweepstakes. I When you look at analytics, you know, a lot of Christmas holiday related videos do well. And I think that's what ties into why vloggers uh, go crazy at Christmas time to try to put as much content out. Um, in that sense, you know, putting out, uh, you know, something again, because it's on trend, uh, if that's the season to do it, then, you know, you're following the trend and it's Vlogmas. So yes, put out as much content as you can. Also look into yourself, like look into what your values are as a content watcher, right? Uh, you are going to be a content provider, but I do feel again, part of being genuine is posting content that you would want to watch yourself, right? Like uh, something definitely that would interest you. So you got to think about subject matter that you genuinely would want to talk about and, um, and post about. And that really comes into play because if you can't watch yourself, who's going to watch you, right? 
Now, I also don't want to completely throw out the concept of putting out a nicely produced video. Again, I just encourage everybody to work within their skill set in, term, in terms of how much they want to edit and how much, uh, you know, quality editing and uh, post editing, you know, fancy effects and all that. Do it based on what you're comfortable with and what you can handle, but it definitely does help. I do think too that if you know how, one, one key thing about videos is length and flow. Um, one of the things that the, the algorithms are gonna, you know, um, that affect the algorithms is for you to create content that's watchable and that can retain those watch times. So like you can have a video, but if people are only gonna, you know, tune in for about 30 seconds of it, 50 sec, one minute. YouTube, of course, is built on advertising. And so they need videos that are gonna engage the audience to watch uh, for longer viewing periods. So that's something to think about when you're creating content, right? Because of course, if your goal eventually is monetization uh, and it, your channel is gonna be monetized, YouTube needs content that's long enough to embed advertising into. So of course, uh, that's gonna be hard if your video is like two minutes long or three minutes long, you can barely sneak in one, you know, 30 second ad in there. There are minute long ads that need to be embedded. That's how you get paid with AdSense, is all those ads that get watched that are overlaid or add it onto your video before your video plays, uh, that's how you get paid. So you definitely have to think about content that's gonna be not only just longer, but that will keep the audience engaged, right? And that's also key in your edits. You, you know, like, I'm very plain Jane right now with this uh, vlog because I just wanted to prioritize getting the information out there about how to get monetized quickly without any fancy kind of editing because uh, I, I hated watching that too with other vloggers, like they're just trying to fill in time and minutes uh, of you still watching while you're waiting for that information. I get it. That's how you're going to get the longer view time like that I'm talking about. Uh, that's some of the tactics, right? Is you're, you're just stalling without actually giving the information that the audience was looking for. So yeah, it has to be meticulously edited in a way where you are gonna give that payoff to the audience of what you say your thumbnail is gonna do, your your title, but at the same time, you have to also make it flow and make it make sense. So that's where editing skills come into play. You know, cut out any kind of unnecessary fluff that I that you wouldn't want to watch. That's my tip for getting a cleaner flow into your edits. I try to do that as much with my videos. I admittedly wasn't that good at that in the beginning until I started watching these tutorials and yeah, and talking about um, retention and watch times. And so you gotta like, you know, factor that in when you're creating your content is like, okay, is this gonna be also good enough in the future to be a monetized uh, content, a monetized video? Is it long enough to embed two ads into it? Is it gonna be engaging enough with the content and the edits and the flow of the video to get people to stick to watching, you know, the video. And then, so that's gonna tie in now with me talking about analytics, okay? One of the things that I was always constantly obsessed about was looking into the analytics section of your YouTube, you know, um, panel there, when you're signed into your account, you gotta check about check on everything of course the views how long are people watching each of your videos because that's going to tell you what videos it's almost like predicting right like what's going to be your hit right what's something that potentially could go viral you got to monitor those things on your analytics regularly and you got to you know i don't completely understand the algorithms myself but what i do know at the basic is that you got to have content that again is gonna have a high retention of viewership, uh, long enough to be feasible to put uh, advertising in, because uh, that's how you get paid. 
and um, and what else? Uh, so yeah, something that's gonna keep people engaged, something that's uh, that's going to be you know good for for placing ads into, and that's shoot, that's all I can think of right now. Now, really quickly, I want to go over things again that you should try to avoid some pitfalls that I also found from researching and looking into other content creators. Um, you definitely. You know, one of the really disappointing things that I'm seeing with a lot of the people trying to get, um, you know, pass through the threshold to get monetized is um, people like trading subscriptions for subscriptions. I just don't see that making sense. And there's just so many YouTube communities out there on social media that it's just like, I think it kind of ruins the spirit of YouTube. You know, it's like, I get it. You're trying to get monetized, but it really defeats the purpose of that organic kind of process where you are literally, you know, the freedom that we have to watch content that we really want to watch and to subscribe to channels and content providers that really interest us. You totally defeat the purpose with this sub for sub situation. And it doesn't really help long term in terms of finding a following, a true following that is going to regularly watch your content. You're just getting that number, you know, to get to a thousand. And yes, it's gonna, you know, help you get through that threshold, but the whole long-term goal is overall success, right? Is to have a genuine following that's gonna give you those watch hours and watch times. And you're really not gonna get that if you were just forcing a trade of a sub for a sub. So that's something to think about. Uh, that being said, there also is an opportunity out there to buy views, to buy subscribers. And you know, a lot of these things are bots and um, or automated. I don't really com completely understand, but from what research I've seen is that yes, it, it technically is allowed, but again, you kind of mess up the algorithm because a lot of these things are automated and they, they kind of like, let's say you bought a bunch of views. Each of those views are only going to be like the bare minimum of what constitutes a views, which I think is like 30 seconds maybe um, of watch time. So you'll have all these views, but then your watch time will be off kilter. So, you know, it. I don't recommend you going that route of, you know, kind of artificially creating subscribers and viewership numbers. It's a lot of hard work and I can't stress it enough. It's hard work and it's hard work that you want, that you want to have to do. Like you kind of want to have to do it, you know, and you have to be passionate for it. And I kind of like me personally, it's like been a game, you know, I'm a, I, I like playing games. I like learning strategies. So I, I really enjoy the part of this whole content creation and the whole part about like, you know, optimizing things and, and gaining exposure. I get really happy when I look at my analytics and I see somebody watch one of my videos straight through to the full value and length of that video. That makes me so proud. I'm like, whoa, oh wow, okay. Somebody out there, you know, is watching me. And again, that's something to think about. You gotta stay tuned with your analytics. YouTube also provides an app for your mobile phone. It's like why? YT, they have an app where you can immediately see, immediately see real time uh, what's going on on your channel, who's, uh, how many, um, you know, how many views are happening. Not exactly who's watching, but you know, how many views are occurring, uh, and also how long each of those viewers are watching your content. So that's something I regularly check into because it helps me know kind of like what I'm doing right and maybe what's not really working uh, when you see a video underperforming in terms of views. But generally, I'm happy to say that most of my videos, um, you know, are doing well. And um, again, it has to do with the whole networking aspect of tying it in with my business and my other social media, because I regularly at least get right off the bat, like, you know, at least, you know, a hundred views right off the bat really quick. I mean, it would be nice for something to go completely viral, but that's what works for me and that's what got me through the threshold. And I'm hoping like one day, one of those videos will go viral. 
um, that would just be such a treat. And um, it would be great if it's, you know, one of my, my wedding videos, one of my events videos that's related to the job that I do. Um, I can only be true to myself and, and post content that's really genuine to me of things that are really actually important to me. So I hope I detailed a bunch of useful tips and information on how I got myself to be monetized within four months of starting my YouTube channel. It's been such a great, rewarding journey so far. I love going on the YouTube community uh, um, pages on Facebook and offering my uh, take on content uh, and also just sharing the knowledge that I intently researched on with other people coming up in, in the YouTube community. I think that's, that's one of the appealing things for me with this whole process is the whole sense of community and then just learning from each other. Um, I'm a communication graduate. I have a degree in communication, so I guess that's also in line with what I went to school for. So that's why this stuff really appeals to me. Um, but yeah, it's definitely still an ongoing journey and I'm just wanting to share, you know, uh, what got me to this little bit of little bit of success so far of reaching that 4,000 hours threshold and getting my my subscribership up to the minimum requirement. So I hope you found some, uh, you know, use with this stuff. Uh, I really was just speaking from the heart. It, this is a very plain Jane video, but I really just wanted to prioritize getting the information out there of what helped me get to this milestone. And I hope you all would wish me luck. I wish you all luck too in uh, your quest, uh, in, in getting your name out there with your YouTube channels. I wish you guys all the best. So the last thing I'm gonna do is plug my channel. Um, this video is kind of like the oddball video because it's, it's kind of its own entity about, you know, like how to, you know, make your channel work. It's not necessarily like covering the usual content that I post. So if you're so inclined, I really encourage you to go and, and explore my channel. And uh, I hope you'll subscribe too and tune into my uh, adventures and my journey through this YouTube uh, world. And um, yeah, and then you'll, we'll just keep track of each other. Please be sure to you know like this video if you like the information that you received. Also, of course, subscribe and share it too. And uh, please feel free to also leave a comment, your thoughts, uh, questions. I'll be glad to answer if I can. You know, I'll try my best. Uh, down below, please feel free to start a dialogue with me. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. Uh, I'm so happy again. I reached my monetization threshold. And so I'm literally making money now from YouTube. That's amazing to say, you know, of just posting stuff that's fun to me, stuff that... I'm doing anyway on my day-to-day -day life every week. So uh, I'm excited, you know, to see where this goes. I'm only four months in and, oh, there's so many more years to go. And I, I'm really looking forward to see where this takes me.